Welcome to One Word from God with Bishop Edwin Uwusi Brookman. He is a prophet of God ordained as a bishop, teaching the Word of God with signs and wonders. Now today's message. There's been too much buha on the prophetic ministry and um, it has suffered a great deal of persecution. People have said all kinds of things about it. Some have even decided to close the door outrightly on the prophetic ministry. And some people, when they even hear the name prophet, no matter how good you are, they just will shut it on you because of all the illicit things that are happening today. I understand them. But the truth is that I think, in the sense of which shutting the door outrightly on the prophets, we have to um, believe God to give sound, biblical-oriented teachings by the prophetic, because certainly it's in the Bible. In Ephesians 4, 11, God gave gifts to men, some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfection of the sin. That tells us that these are gifts given by God himself, all right? So we cannot throw the prophetic ministry um, outrightly out of the out of the window or maybe into the bubble like that. Uh, we have to teach biblical-oriented messages so that those who are discerning after they've heard about the sound word concerning the prophetic ministry, then they will decipher as to whether they are opening up to read or not. And what I'll be teaching on the prophetic today is the seven kinds of prophets. We have seven kinds of prophets. The first one is the prophets who are born prophets. Some people are born prophets. Like in the case of Jeremiah 1, 5 to 10. The Bible said, God said, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Moving down, you can continue. But God explicitly told Jeremiah that, Jerry, before you were formed, even in your mother's womb, I would ordain you a prophet over the nation. So some people are born prophets. See, that's why I have a problem with people who say that um, the last um, prophet who died <coughs> among the apostles ended a prophetic dispensation. Now, if pro- some people are born prophets, that means that some people, God is still um, causing some people to be born prophets. Number two, we have those who are called to be prophets. Above on those who are ordained in their mother's womb as prophets, some are also called to be prophets. All right? Like Amos 7, 14 to 15. Amos chapter 7, verse 14 to verse number 15. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was not a prophet, nor was I a son of a prophet. But I was a sheep breather and a tender of sycamore fruit, which means that he was a farmer. Then the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel. Which means that Amos was saying that he was not the son of a prophet. Which means that he had never been to any prophetic training where he was the son of any major prophet. He said that he was not born a prophet. But then he was a farmer when God called him and told him to go prophesy to his people Israel. So some people were not born prophet, but they were called some could be um, doctors, lawyers, um, politicians, but, but, but God will call them and make them prophets. A farmer, a teacher, but God will call them and make them prophets. So some are called to be prophets. Number three, then we have those who are made prophets. Those who are made prophets. Those who are made. Some people are made prophets. According to Amos, the chapter 7, the verse 14 and 15 as we just read. He said, The name was answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor was I the son of a prophet, but I was a farmer. Then the Lord took me as I followed the flock. Then the Lord said to me, Go prophesy. All right. But I want to measure on the bit that says that then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor was I the son of a prophet. In those days, if somebody was called the son of a prophet, it means that he is in the prophetic college and they stayed in a great prophet. Like in the book of 2 Kings, the chapter number 2, from um, the verse number 2 through the verse number 10, 15 thereabout, the Bible says that um, Elijah began his journey with Elisha from Gilgal to Bethel, Bethel to Jericho, Jericho to Jordan. And while they were going, when they got to Gilgal um, and Bethel and Jericho and Jordan, they were the sons of the prophet who in terms of the will come and tell Elisha that 
doesn't he know that his boss Elijah will be taken away from him so these sons of the prophets were prophets who were trained to become prophets so we have prophets who are made the prophets they are trained to be made prophets and then number four those who become prophets through impartation and transfer by the laying on of the hands of the presbytery when hands are laid on people by prophetic impartation some become prophet also i've had a couple of sons that god has used me to do same on them all right so there are some when you lay hands on them like in 2 timothy the chapter 1 verse 6 to 7 second timothy um 1 chapter 1 verse 6 to 7 the bible says that um, paul wrote to timothy and said to him that um stir up or fan to flame the gift of the spirit that were released upon you by the laying on of the hands of the presbytery which means that when we lay hands on people we can transfer this unbelievers cannot understand because i understand them to them it's foolishness but to us is the power of god we have laid hands on people and we've transferred the anointing that is on us on a whole lot of prophets all right so when hands of reputed anointed accountable prophets are laid on young ministers the prophetic anointing could be imparted on them all right like in the case of um elisha um, once um, he was in Dothan when the Syrian army sent a delegation to come arrest him and his servant Gehazi got up and went out the Bible says he saw um, soldiers who had surrounded the house he went inside and went to, to tell the old man that um, spiritual father I've seen um, a lot of um, soldiers by the Syrians that have come to arrest us and um, the prophet Elijah said that what's your problem those who are with us are more than those who are with them and the Bible says that the young prophet said, that, What are you talking about? I just can't understand what you're talking about. And instantly, the old man prophet said, Father, open his eyes and let him see what I'm seeing. In essence, he transferred what was on him on him. And instantly, the eye of the younger prophet was open and he began to see what the old man was seeing. What I'm saying is that we can lay hands on people and then the grace on us to prophesy could be transferred on other people. So some are made prophet by virtue of the laying on of the hands of the presbytery and then number five the fifth kinds of prophet those who desired earnestly for the prophetic mantle to come upon them and they desire until god visits them and then gives them or call them that grace to be able to prophesy that you can find that in 1 corinthians chapter 14 verse 1 1 corinthians chapter 14 verse 1 the bible says pursue love and desire spiritual gifts but especially that you may prophesy so people can desire to prophesy until God shows the mercy and grant them grace to prophesy. I knew a friend who wasn't prophet, was not a prophet at all, but he desired for the prophetic. And one day God visited him and had mercy on him and granted him that grace, and he began to prophesy. And then the third group of prophets are those who were not desiring for the prophetic at all. Nothing about them was prophetic. They didn't know they were prophets. They didn't wish. They had not even heard about any prophet prophesying. They but God just found them and looked with prophetic anointing on them. There are people like that too. That is the one in Ephesians, the chapter 4, verse 11 to 12, where the Bible says God gave gifts to men. You don't labor for gifts. All right? You don't fast for gifts. You, you don't lobby for gifts. So they, these are people, God finds them and then release the gifts on them. And sometimes with, 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 with their little educational background and God just favors them and just grant them that gift and then they are just on the road and they are just prophesying. There are people also like that who God just finds them and gives them that gift as well. Now, these people who receive this gift to prophesy would have to be trained by accountable, reputable prophets so that their ministry can be authentic and reputed and they can really make more impact with the gift that has been given to them. The servant group of prophets are those who prophesy as the occasion serves them these um, they are not too much prophetic people that every day they stand and prophesy all the time and they they call themselves prophet and stuff like that but um once a while as the occasion serves them they can prophesy like in numbers 11 25 then the lord came down in the cloud and spoke to moses and took of the spirit that was upon him and placed the same upon the 70 elders and it happened when the spirit rested upon them that they prophesied although they never prophesied again you know in that convocation when moses's anointing was released upon 70 the 70 elders the bible said when they began to prophesy there were these two these two young guys in the tent called Ed made that and they began to prophesy in the tent they were not part of the convocation but the spirit came, came upon them and they prophesied until a time where the spirit halted and they stopped prophesying so there are people like that 
that the spirit of God in the euphoria of the anointing can move them to speak and prophesy that doesn't mean they are prophet but as occasion serves them they can prophesy as well like in the case of 1 Samuel chapter 2 chapter 10 verse 6 to 7 about Saul then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turning to another man and let it be when these signs come to you that you do as the occasion demands for God is with you Saul wasn't a prophet but as occasion demands once in a while he prophesied all right so there are people who also prophesy um, as occasion serves them so these are the seven kinds of prophets that the Bible teaches us about